morning. It's 5.30. I'd like to welcome everyone and call to order tonight's regular Board of Education meeting for Wednesday, October 25th, 2023, here in the boardroom. We have a roll call, please, Tammy. Jacqueline Grunler. Here. Nubs Ashbeck. Here. Brett Waller. Here. Lindy Gangling. Here. Paul Crew. Chad Krieger. Kendra Osnes. Here. Ron Liberty. Here. Kevin Blake. Here. Thank you, Tammy. You join me face to flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening and welcome to the Merrill Area Public Schools Board of Education. MAPS respects the role that our elected board members serve and the function of our board meetings. Board members and administrators are committed to working collaboratively to provide our students with the highest levels of achievement. This meeting is a formal event, and professional conduct is the expectation for all in attendance. Thank you. Thank you, Shannon. Next on our agenda, our first thing is our public comment to the board. I do not have any sheets turned in, so we'll move right on with board recognition. During this point on our agenda, we, tonight we, the board would like to recognize John Hagemeister for being part of a three-person panel on September 28th at Harvard Kennedy School in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Thank you. Well, yeah. Tammy's going to sneak over and grab oh, yeah, a yeah. picture. Right. You have Max in here. moment to sure. share that experience with us. That'd be well, appreciated. Here, I'll sit down. This is a good start. <laughs> so, so last May, I was driving to Madison to go to the first ever in-person BBA choir concert. First time the kids ever got together. They did all the rehearsals online, so it was kind of a cool thing. And I get this email from a guy from University of Oklahoma asking if I want to be a part of a panel at Harvard. So I'm like, yeah, delete, you know, this is some kind of sales pitch or whatever. And then I, re I read it, and I'm like, this, this actually might be legitimate. So then I sent it to Shannon. Think about this. He's like, that looks like a great opportunity, which means he probably didn't read it. <laughs> you know? And I'm like, oh, okay. So, so then I sat down with uh, Jamie, our assistant director, and I looked at it, and I'm like, do you think this is legit? She said, I don't know. She said, it's at the back. She said, it's at the back. And the guy said, yeah, we want you to come there. We researched a bunch of virtual uh, or online schools throughout the country, and yours is very successful, so we want to hear more about it. And I said, okay. Well, then fast forward into June, I didn't hear anything back, and then I had some health issues, so I sort of dropped everything for a while. And then I came back in, and I got an, another email, like in July, from this guy saying, you want to do this or not? I said, I said sure. So I, reached back out to him again and they gave me some info and um, so it was basically what they what it is it's a, a conference on emerging school models so uh, virtual education homeschooling there's micro schools there's a whole thing on AI but this is the second year that they've done this where they bring all these people together to listen to presentations about the different schooling options and then they talk about it because that's what they do at Harvard so it was this, this strange mix of uh, school practitioners, government, you know, policymakers, salespeople. I mean, it was it was just kind of an eclectic bunch. Not everybody there was a supporter of anything other than the traditional brick and mortar, which made it really interesting because there's some good discussion that we had. Um, but for our part, I got to talk about how great the Merrill Schools has been to support what we do and just why I felt like our, our model is successful. Um, and you know, I'm trying to clearly state that just because we're successful at what we do, that doesn't mean it's for everybody, because it's not. But I think what we do, we do quite well. Um, so, it, you know, not something that I expect to ever have happen again, but it was, it was fun. And I'm glad we, you know, we were able to share the experience of the district, because it's not just BDA, it's the whole district. And um, so if you have, you know, an hour of your life you want to <laughs> spend watching, it was kind of a fun, uh, the two people that were with me on the panel were not 
uh, practitioners per se. One of them was a researcher, and another guy runs an organization called um, the Digital Learning Alliance or something like that. But he's he, they're both kind of nationwide school people, and so um, just being on that has led to like all these people reaching out to us now and hey, tell us more about your school. I'm like, well, I don't know how it works in Mississippi, but here's how it works in Wisconsin, and. Um, but it's, it's kind of been a motivator for the staff, too, because they feel pretty good about, you know, just being recognized. And, and I hope you guys feel good about it, too, because it's, it's really pretty cool. So, so that's what it was. I shared the, busy, uh, the video with the board. Um, okay. If you haven't had a chance to watch it yet, then. it's very interesting because the John's part, especially the uh, first half of your part, is kind of like a nice little like, history recap of how BBA yeah. really got to where it is today because it did have very humble Started, I could use yeah, that. yeah, yeah. So, Rocky. Uh, I thought it was you say that. I just knew that we're here, then you know that. Yeah. So I thought it was a great panel. I thought the video was great. I did watch it. Mm -hmm. I did read your email. We did. So. Yeah. <laughs> no, it was it was good, and it, it was kind of funny because they told me I had 15 minutes to share my history or share the story, and then uh, we were going to have questions from the people who were uh, running the conference, and then we would have open questions from the people in the audience, and. Um, you know, I could talk for hours about PDA. <laughs> you know, it's like people are asking me, how are you preparing? I'm like, 12 years of doing this is pretty much how I prepared for it. So I'm going, you know, I, I was somewhere in the story, and then all of a sudden I see someone back there, one minute. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let me wrap this up. And so I tried to be concise with why I thought it was successful. But um, it, it, was, it was a good experience, and, you know, I'm really proud of what the partnership that we've had has done. And I know some of you were on the board when we started. And one of the things that I remember sharing with uh, with the board, sharing with DPI, because we had a lot of interaction with them, was like, hey, just let this thing go for a little bit. I think it's going to be good. I think it's going to work. And so now, looking back at that, I'm like, it <laughs> <that> worked. <laughs> you know, but anyway, so thank you for this. This will go in our wall of fame. Nice thank you. Yeah. Yeah. John representing the district and BVA. I thought that was phenomenal. And while that's a hard act to follow, we do have Max Black here as our student board rep, so someone has to do it. Might as well be Max tonight. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about what's going on at the uh, school activities at the high school. Yeah. So on the 20th, Blue Jay football took home a 28 to 26 win against the Lumberjacks for a perfect finish to the season. Volleyball finished strong as well, making it all the way to the regional semifinal level on the 19th. Both teams did a great job re representing our school, and the seniors should be proud of their performance. On Friday, November 10th, the high school will be cele celebrating Veterans Day. There will be two ceremonies to commemorate this day. Mr. Potter, with help from other staff, usually organizes and performs these ceremonies. But this year, he has the goal to get students more involved. The National Honor Society is helping to organize and plan the band will perform patriotic pieces, and senior Eric Mann has taken the role as MC. We're lucky and happy to have Iraq veteran David Mathias as our keynote speaker, who has been portrayed in the National Geographic miniseries Long Road Home. This month, a small group called the Attendance Matters Committee, or the AMC, was created and had its first meeting. The group is made up of community members who hold or have held positions in private sector or government roles that are believed to have a perspective that will help chosen children avoid truancy. Staff such as Mrs. Kubitschek and Mr. Potter facilitate this process and schedule the students' time with the committee. The committee has authority to recommend actions that students and staff should take to improve attendance. For roughly two months now, our daily schedule has been different from last year due to an adjustment in staff. Fourth period is now a time for clubs to meet and for students to get extra help. For me, since fourth period is back to back with lunch, I have a sizable chunk of time to leave campus and eat lunch as long as I haven't been requested by a teacher. Ninth and 10th graders aren't allowed to open campus and have an intervention time where they can work on homework, meet with teachers, to have lessons retaught, and just build strong relationships with the staff. Wonderful. Thanks for the update, Max. Any board members have any questions or follow up? I don't have a question, but follow up with his veterans program. 
uh, November's and retired veterans month. So, and if you want to honor them, uh, put a green light bulb outside your house or somewhere inside where people can see. So, if you want to support the veterans, uh, a green light bulb. Okay. Any other board members have any follow up for Max? I think that was a great update. Appreciate your time once again this evening. Moving on our, our agenda, next is the administrative reports. Uh, board members who had any questions certainly could have emailed the directors or administrators before this. Otherwise, they can ask questions uh, during the meeting, so it's on the record. This time, I'll turn over the section to uh, Mr. Murray. Thank you. Uh, the first uh, report tonight is the summer school report. Amanda Patterson's here. She shared that at CPP the other evening, uh, talking about um, participation numbers and those kind of things. And again, Ms. Patterson's here for the basic questions. Next up is the annual exit survey data review for 22-23, um, staff exit, that is. And uh, Kelly Strike shared that with Amanda at HR Finance, and she's here to answer any questions. The uh, monthly food service report for the month of September is attached from Laura Krause, including participation. Um, any questions regarding that? Out of no disrespect to my yeah, attendance. Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. I don't have a, uh, well, the question I have is just uh, curiosity. What does an average uh, student in the high school spend for lunch? Uh, what is it, 280s? Yeah, you want me to look at my own? Okay. <laughs> yeah, so there, there's the standard lunch. I think it's 260 or 280. Okay. And then um, there's a la carte items. And that's where sometimes that it can tend to add up. Yeah. Yeah. I, I guess why the reason I'm asking that is because I saw something on Facebook where somebody paid for a student's lunch that were they were behind. Mm -hmm. you know, I think we could get more of that if we advertise it. I, I think there's a lot of people don't know that you can pay some students lunch checks behind. And if there was a way we could uh, get it, like in the photo booth or something, yeah. you know, if you want to do something nice for Christmas or Thanksgiving, uh, pay us students back lunch or something. It's just Yeah, maybe, maybe we could put that as an agenda item. There's uh, a reasonable explanation why that's challenging. Mostly like <coughs> donated a hundred dollars for this account. Right. The biggest account balance or the oldest or you know, there's there's a lot of layers to that. So maybe we'll just kinda introduce that as a topic in the future. Right. right. And I understand all that. Just saying that there's gotta be a way that that we could advertise it. Yeah. So, okay. Thank you. Yeah. The uh, <coughs> next up was the Pine River School for Young Learners uh, monthly report, including enrollment numbers, uh, some of that documentation is from the from the Head Start office, etc. Ryan is here to answer any questions if anyone has. The third Friday enrollment uh, report is presented by Ms. Luska. Um, this is the data from uh, this this fall's the Director of Business Services Report, final budget adjustments, low revenue ceiling changes, by staff, et cetera. Kelly, of course, is going to answer any questions you might have on that. Next up is the Director of Buildings and Grounds Transportation Update. Uh, Bill is not here this evening, but his report has a couple of different uh, things in there, capital improvement, project safety, products, et cetera, et cetera. If there are any questions we can attempt to answer those, we'll forward those on to Item H is district goals for 23-24. We've kind of shared this in different formats um, over um, the last several weeks. We essentially have two goals, an academic goal and uh, a mental health or SEL goal. And um, as you're all aware, we have our literacy um, together initiative in the school in the school district with the, with the purpose of improving literacy scores. And that academic goal, as stated there, is during the 23-24 school year. All students will meet or exceed expected growth of literacy. 
using our assessment tools in addition to students with disabilities will meet their aggressive growth goals. Those are defined through those assessments. That, so it's a, it's a measure. Uh, they did their pre-assessments in fall. There is an expected growth goal by spring. And so that's what the, uh, that's focused on. And then the, the SEL goal, which is a little bit further down on page two, by June 24, as a district-wide average, 62 percent of students will consistently apply practices of we are of the we are connected mindset from data collected by a post survey. Same thing. We did a pre-survey at all grade levels to determine uh, how students felt in the area of we are connected as one of the seven mindsets um, principles. And so we have some baseline data, and that that baseline pre-assessment data is at the bottom of that 60. About 65% of the elementary grade students responded yes that they are applying the We Are Connected mindset. That's quite a bit lower in the secondary levels, uh, 30%. So uh, we took those averages, put a stretch goal to it, and, and we came up with a 65%, or 62%, I'm sorry. So those are our two, our two uh, focus areas this year. They have links in there uh, to our 100-day plan. You've, you've seen that before, but, uh, where that's always in the forefront. When I say what the 100-day plan is, it's very short, it's focused, it's, uh, the, the responsibilities are delegated, and um, we are doing what we said we were going to do. That's the right best way to say that, and, and being accountable to each other. So, any questions on the school goals for the year? And then, uh, finally, it was the superintendent's report, it just kind of some housekeeping things in there more than anything. Tomorrow we have our MSI day. Um, which is a building level day primarily. We are getting together as a whole staff at 11.30 in the high school auditorium for some celebrations and a check-in on our goals that I just shared with you. And um, then after that, we have lunch in the, in the uh, commons. Um, it's a tailgate theme part uh, uh, lunch, so people are encouraged to wear jerseys, et cetera. We have some of our board members that will be going on for us. And so I appreciate the folks that are helping out with that. I think our staff always appreciates that as well. The survey, I think there's a copy maybe. Is there a copy? Mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. spot? Mm -hmm. um, that survey goes out uh, this week. And so we're looking forward to seeing um, results back from that. Some I think it closes on the 20th. And then we can kind of make some decisions moving forward on how we want to proceed with facilities. On the 7th, we're hosting a, on November 7th, we're hosting a Jefferson a Community lesson, Listening Session on the survey. Uh, we'll we'll fold in some of the changes to low revenue ceiling that's gone down in fall and the impact that, that has had on us not meeting an operation through our friend, uh, this, this April. Um, so we'll start advertising that and it's been actually publicized on Facebook and some other things are going to show us. So, uh, that, that every, every board member, of course, is welcome to join us for that. And then uh, on the 14th, we go down uh, to participate in our second SAIL Academy session. That's where we uh, review our conclusion of our first 100-day plan as an team and start developing our second 100-day plan, which I'm looking forward to. Any questions on that report? Thank you. Thanks, Jeremy. Next on our agenda this evening is our committee reports. First update we have is from the policy committee, a lot of work they did there on October 2nd. Yeah. Draft minutes are attached. Committee members are present. If you have any board members have questions for our policy committee. If you have any questions for policy committee. Hearing none, we'll move on to the Finance Human Resources Committee. Uh, attached were the draft minutes from the October 11th meeting. Ron Liberty as chair is available and other members of the Finance Human Resources Committee. Any board members have questions for the Finance HR Committee? Hearing none, we'll have the same opportunity with the CTP or Curriculum Technology Pupil Services Committee attached with the draft minutes from the October 11th committee meeting. The members of that committee are available for questions. Any board members have questions for our CTP committee? Hearing none, we'll move on. The next on our agenda is unfinished business. We do not have anything under that heading. So we'll move right into Board of Education business. 
first item there is the adoption of the 2023-2024 budget and levy certification attached as a topic summary sheet from Dr. Kelly Strike. The recommended motion. Anyone? Ron? Motion to approve the 2023-2024 budget as presented and to set the property tax levy at $9,463,617 for fund 10 and $350,000 for fund 80 for a total levy of $9,813,617. We have a motion by Ron. Do we have a second? I'll second. We have a second by Brett. Any discussion or questions on this motion or topic? Any discussion or questions on this motion or topic? Kelly, is there anything you'd like to highlight on that? This is certainly a thorough topic summary and you've been through this at committee and things, but anything you'd like to highlight before the vote? <laughs> um, I guess a couple of things. Um, I just, I think everyone at committee heard, but that was, um, we obviously had to change since annual meeting with additional revenue that we weren't anticipating. So I guess just to highlight the, the process that our old team began an exercise in July and August um, to assist with final ESTER planning and kind of thinking of that operationally moving forward. Um, once we heard of the new revenue, we gave an opportunity for all staff to give input via survey about <coughs> needs they may have in their classrooms and across the building. Uh, and then our alt team and Dale have done a lot of work in terms of walkthroughs. And so we have um, put together a list of what that additional revenue and budget expense that you can see kind of some highlights in there um, that include um, some limited staffing, and we have to keep in mind our enrollment is um, <coughs> but some additional staff, including an additional um, aid at Kate, some behavior support at middle school, and you'll probably hear about that more next month, um, bringing back um, some part-time custodial help and sub-custodians, um, and looking for a social worker, ideally so that we could have one in each building. Um, right now, our elementary building is sharing that with a social worker. Um, and we've identified a lot of around furniture, some instructional supplies, and building improvements. So that's largely uh, where the additional funds have gone. Um, the other thing um, that has changed since there, I just want to highlight, is the mental health aid. We got an AODA grant, and we've refined a lot of our grants that absent a couple of directors over the summer, we were able to continue to refine those. Um, you will see that since even my projection, a little bit of an increase in mill rate and total tax that's largely Aid was a little bit um, less than um, I had projected, um, and we don't know that until October 15th. The other thing is private school vouchers. I just want to make it clear that that is not um, revenue that's coming from the district. We're kind of almost a pastor. We have to lobby for that, and that goes back to private school vouchers. Um, that we don't know until October 15th as well, and that was a little bit higher than I anticipated. We went from 780000 I was estimating about 950000 here now, about over $1.2 um, the mill rate you can see at the end of them was 584. I think there's more details in there, but that's kind of good highlight. Any questions for Kelly? Please. I just want to recognize Kelly. This has been her life's work since <laughs> a long time, and especially with the whole revenue ceiling change that was dropped on her, which is a good thing to have dropped on her. Mm -hmm. um, but that was. Uh, Pleasant surprise, but still a surprise. It required a lot of thinking, a lot of action on our part, and I think the process that we came up with at getting staff input for what they need for some revenue uh, was, was very engaging. I think people at Green felt really good about that process, and so uh, congratulations on getting that balance uh, that budget balance to do that. And I'll throw in a couple of Skyward glitches along the way that added some stress to your life, but uh, we made it. Yeah. Thanks, Shannon. Thank you, Kelly. Yeah. So now that we have the additional highlights and, and that, we do have a motion and a second. So all those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed, say nay. Any abstentions? Motion carries. Next item on our agenda this evening is revision of the evidence-based COVID-19 mitigation policy. Attached was a topic summary sheet from Ryan Martinovich. Anyone have a motion on this topic this evening? I 
Jacqueline. I recommend a motion to approve the revised Head Start evidence-based COVID-19 mitigation policy. Motion by Jacqueline. Do we have a second? Second by Kendra. Do we have any discussion or questions on this motion or topic this evening from board members? Any discussion or questions on the motion or topic? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed, say nay. Do you have any abstentions? Motion carries. Next on our agenda this evening is the approval of the Head Start Annual Report. The annual report was compiled by Ryan Martinovich. Uh, anyone have a motion this evening? Nubs? I recommend a motion to approve the Head Start Annual Report as presented to the board. A motion by Nubs. Do we have a second? Second by Jacqueline. Do we have any discussion or questions on this motion or topic? Any discussion or questions on this motion or topic? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed, say nay. Any abstentions? Motion carries. Next on our agenda is the Head Start training for the Board of Education. As you're aware, the Board of Education is the governing body of the Head Start program, and us as board members must receive training specific to our roles as governing body members, and we need to be able to articulate how the training has helped us make the decisions about the Head Start program. So we do get some additional training along the way through additional topic summaries on Board of Education reports or special agenda items. But we did have attached in our packet a training presentation and the governance training agreement. Uh, Mr. Martinovich is available for any questions if, if you have not reached out directly already. When you do uh, complete that, please uh, fill out the form and return to Tammy by the beginning of November. If you could add a November 10th must do date on there, please. Any questions on that process? This is informational only, but an important piece of board work. Hearing nothing, we will move on to our pre-calculus and technical math textbook adoption and purchase from Merrill High School. Attached was a topic summary sheet from Amanda Patterson. This has been discussed at both the Finance Human Resources and CTP committees with a recommended motion. Anyone willing to make a motion on this agenda item tonight? <coughs> Ron? Make a motion to approve the purchase orders for high school textbooks from Savas Learning Company and withdraw purchase from the Esser Funds. We have a motion by Ron. Do we have a second? We have a second by Nubs. Any discussion or questions on this motion or topic? How much uh, money we have left from the Esser Funds? By the end of September, zero. I mean, by the end of next September, we have it all accounted for. It's all accounted for. Okay. So unless somehow you get a, a discount on something, right. it was yeah. okay. needs to be adjusted. Kelly and the team are looking at that closely to make yeah. sure we're utilizing all of that. Yeah. Any additional questions on the motion or the topic? Okay, just, uh, Go ahead. Can you just no, to really address your question. You will be approving stuff with Messer, Messer funds for quite a while yet, yeah. but it's all it's all, better. It's all spoken for. All spoken Resor for. A lot of curriculum, a lot of resources. Okay. Okay. So you'll see these come to the line. Okay. Sorry. Thank you, Shannon. <coughs> additional discussion or questions for this motion or agenda item topic? Hearing none, all those in favor of that motion signify by saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed, say nay. Any abstentions? Motion carries. Next item on our agenda is a technical correction that's being made to policy 7440, the facility security for bylaw 0131.3. The superintendent is authorized to review and make technical corrections to policies that have already been adopted through our normal rulemaking procedures. This is the way that it is brought to our attention. So, this 
consider all of us uh, made aware of those technical corrections to policy 7440. Next we will start in on a number of NEOLA volume 32 policy updates and first readings. Uh, first one that I'm seeing and I believe we need Tammy to go through these individually, correct? So, so let me ask this, does anyone want to articulate or discuss any particular policy in that section as a first reading prior to our line on the, within section G of our board business? I can go through them, that would be policy 7310, which is personal property, 0164 for meetings, 5505, academic honesty, 6236, community services fund, 7250.01, memorials for staff and students, policy 7440.02, smart monitoring equipment, 7540.08, artificial intelligence, policy 8121, personal background check for contracted services, policy 8700, nursing mothers, policy 8913, section 504, ADA, Prohibition Against Disability Discrimination in Employment. That's a, uh, a, a renumbered policy or new. Anyone have any discussion they want to go through or is someone willing to make a motion to go through them as first readings in the group I just listed? Ron? Do you want them read individually? Or just item H? Right in G. Or G? Yeah. G. It's because you have them read them all, yeah. but I can just put that in my notes if that's what you Make a motion to approve all the policies in item G as a first reading. A motion by Ron. Do we have a second? Second by Jacqueline. I would ask if we, if we do have any discussion or questions uh, on that entire motion or anything as a part of that. Please note that as stated that it's as a first reading so that will come up again. Second reading consent agenda next month if passed. Any discussion or questions either on the process or, or that particular motion? Hearing none, all those in favor of that motion signify by saying aye. 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 And one opposed, say nay. Do you have any abstentions? Motion carries. The next item on our agenda is our personnel report, the hirings, recruitments, resignations, retirements. That personnel report is put together by Dr. Kelly Strike and, and her team. There is a recommended motion if someone's willing to make a motion this evening. Nubs? I move to um, approve the bad personnel report from that Kelly strike regarding hires slash transfers, vacancies, and leaves, um, and found the satisfaction of the appropriate liquid damage for resignation if applicable. Motion by Nubs. Do we have a second? Second by Kendra. Any discussion or questions on this motion topic report? Any discussion or questions? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Say nay. Any abstentions? Motion carries. Next on our agenda is in fact the consent agenda. I would ask at this time if anyone would like anything pulled from the consent agenda to be handled on its own. Jacqueline? Um, policy 5530. 5530? Student 
question of intoxicants, drugs, or paraphernalia. Okay, we will pull that and then start a discussion on that, correct, Tammy? I uh, will turn the floor over for yourself, Jacqueline, to explain what you would like to discuss or how to uh, handle this particular policy, please. Sure. So I'm actually on policy, and we had a discussion briefly on this um, as we were making the selections for revisions to this policy. Um, under item G, the selection for essential oils and oily products that may be mistaken for a drug. Um, I just kind of had a question because I myself use oils personally or with my children and know of others. Um, and I know at the meeting when we kind of discussed like what would happen if somebody was using that like for a remedy for a headache or um, digestion or whatever it would be at that point really be something that would be kind of enforced or a child wouldn't really get in trouble for it. Um, but the more I thought about it after the meeting, the more I felt like it just doesn't fit with like the heading of this policy. And so like if a student was and it was in violation, like it would I just don't know that it goes under like intoxicants, drugs, or paraphernalia. I feel like it should just be handled under another policy if that's a thing. So I don't know that I would select option G to include that. Ed or Ron, anything to add from a perspective of you with you? Yeah. I thought we Oh, I don't, I feel like my memory is, it got checked, but I don't know that after thinking about it more in like practical use that I would. But either way, it's still checked on I'm, I'm here always, as always an brought option. Through. Yeah, so. Are you all right with it not being checked as being mentioned yeah. by yeah, the Yes, but I thought that what we were talking about was not checking. Is this a thing? Are you seeing oils? Um, a little bit of oils, but it's not, they're in like an original essential oil bottle. Um, there are a few students that do use it. Um, are you seeing anything that would be a concern under this policy as a use of intoxicant? No, I, I, I don't. And then I would follow up with, if we had some THC oil or something that was tested, it would still fall into this policy, right. regardless of that box was checked. So, um, because it's a, a, what's in that oil, once it's tested, if that makes sense. So I'm comfortable with G not being checked. Can, can I just comment to that too? Yeah, if it's specific for THC oil, then I would recommend to Neola to put it, that it's specific to those types of things. But yeah, I, I agree with Jacqueline to have these. Linda, go ahead. <coughs> just, I mean, since there's still discussion on that right now, do we send it back to the policy committee and have them revamp that or maybe put that uh, essential oils or something else under a different policy number or create a whole new policy for something like that? I don't, I don't know. If that's, uh, we just don't check it because if the NEOLA has it, they support us and back us from a liability standpoint, right? So we just don't check it and not accept that box, right? Or does it have to go back to Neil? Because sometimes if we did some unchecking or something, then they have to go back and review something. So no, no, that's, that's, that's an option. Okay. It's so we can take it. it so well, I'm just asking legal wise. Neil is still good if you want to check. Yeah. Okay. Is, it, is it a thing, Trisha? Um, I just confirmed with Megan, like, there's this dab oil, but anything that we would think would be suspicious, we would test, right? And then that would kind of be the deciding factor. If it was an essential oil, it's an essential oil. If it was this THC dab oil, whatever it's called. And it was a THC dab, it would be covered under B, which is checked. Mm -hmm. Okay, other, my other thought is, I feel like, because I, I, I understand what you're saying, I guess I think of essential oils as like true essential, like a peppermint oil for a headache or a, a something for digestion, right. whatever. Yeah. Um, put lavender on an owie or something. But like, I think what you're saying is something different. So like if you have suspicions for other oils that aren't categorically like a 
THC or something like that, I, you maybe you could just eliminate essential oil and just say oil like products mistaken for drugs. But if you're not discovering that you're like, oh, we need an option to be able to like, I ask a student about something that I would just eliminate it altogether just because it's confusing. I, I don't think, I mean, I don't know where the stand is on essential oils. Back when essential oils started, there was a huge buzz around the state and in legal sessions. I remember attending the things, but essential oils are more normalized now. Um, I, I just think the spirit of this policy is probably just these oil-like substances that are like in um, letter B that they're worried about. Okay. Then I would stand with my suggestion. All right. Could you put that, um, after a little group discussion, could you put that in a form of a motion? Sure. Um, can I just make the revision? Like, I would recommend yes. a motion. Yeah to revise policy 5530, student use or possession of intoxicants, drugs, or paraphernalia, to redact option G, essential oils and oil-like products that may be mistaken for a drug. I second that. Motion by Jacqueline. We have a second by Ron. Any additional clarifying questions or discussion? Any additional clarifying questions or discussion on that motion. Hearing none, all those in favor of that motion signify by saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed, say nay. Any abstentions? Right. Motion carries, thank you. Any additional items that anyone would like pulled from the consent agenda to be handled individually? I have a motion to approve the consent agenda items A through D, which includes minutes of the September 27, 2023, October 9, 2023 meetings, and the second reading approval of the following policies. 7544, use of social media, bylaw 0142.1, electronic <coughs> devices, bylaw 0143.1, public expression of board members, Bylaw 0144.3, Conflict of Interest, Policies 3121-4121, Criminal History Record Check and Employee Self-Reporting Requirements, Policy 2340, District Sponsored Trips, Policy 2451, Program and Curriculum Modifications, Policy 2521, Selection of Instructional Materials and Equipment, Policy 5113, Open Enrollment Program, parentheses interdistrict. Uh, policy 5200, Attendance. Policy 5517, Student Anti-Harassment. Policy 6151, Return slash Outstanding State Checks. Policy 6610, Non-District Supported Student Activity Accounts. Policy 7440.01, video surveillance and electronic monitoring. Policy 8146, notification of education options. Policy 8420, school safety. Policy 8500, food services. And policy 8531, free and reduced price meals. The deletion of the following policies. Policy 0164.1, regular meetings. Policy 0164.2 Special Meetings, Policy 0165.1 Notice of Meetings, Policy 0165.2 Change of Regular Meetings, Policy 6123, Policy 3123, Policy 4123, Section 405 slash 88, Prohibition Against Dis Disability Discrimination and Employment, and Policy 5250, program or curriculum modifications, claims, vouchers, and receipts totaling 
$8,826.23 and donations totaling $4,310. We have a motion by Ron. Do we have a second? Second by Nubs. All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed, say nay. Any abstentions? I Linda? abstain from the October 9th minutes. All right. I'll abstain from the 27th and October 9th minutes. All right. Motion carries with the abstentions as noted, Tammy. Next on our agenda is items for future meetings. The purpose of this agenda item is just to identify any topics to be visited or revisited at an upcoming meeting, be it a committee meeting or board of the whole. We do attach a, a running list of requested items that we're continuing to monitor through other processes, such as our facilities study and survey, et cetera, with the future of Jefferson School, and also coming up with additional uh, information or ways to inform our community how, how the board operates through committees and, and board meetings, et cetera. With that said, is, does any board member have any items for future meetings that they would like to make a note of right now? Any additional items for future meetings? Otherwise, feel free to contact uh, Mr. Murray or myself or any of the chairs of the committees so we can make sure we have those on there in a timely manner. So if you can do that a, a week or 10 days prior would be appreciated. Thank you. Next on our agenda is a reminder of tomorrow morning's radio schedule, approximately 8.15 a.m. on Blue Jay 730 radio. Uh, Mr. Murray and I will go through tonight's agenda and anything happening in the district. Uh, future meetings, the safety committee meeting will be held on Monday, October 30th at 12.30 p.m. in the boardroom. Facilities committee next meets on Wednesday, November 1st at 3.30 p.m. in the boardroom. School forest advisory meeting is Monday, November 6th, 4 p.m. at the school forest. The Head Start Policy Council meets Tuesday, November 7th, 5.30 p.m. Pine River School for Young Learners. There's a community listening session on November 7th at 6 p.m. at Jefferson School. CTP or Curriculum Technology Pupil Services Committee meets next on Wednesday, November 8th, 4.30 p.m. here in the boardroom. Finance Human Resources Committee meeting will be Wednesday, November 8th. Uh, starting no sooner than 5 p.m. following CTP here in the boardroom. Our next regular <coughs> scheduled board meeting is Wednesday, November 15th, 5.30 p.m. in the boardroom. I just so want to remind the board that for the meetings on November 8th, CTP and HR Finance, those agendas will be coming out first on the morning of the 6th. And there's an application, so uh, we'll be pushing that deadline. So it'll be a pretty short The committee is during the day and it is a subcommittee of the facilities, so we do get a report as an agenda item at the facilities committee as one of the first items there. And it's usually just a couple days immediately in front of facilities, and like you see, it's the Monday right before that Wednesday. Mm -hmm. um, so, no, we have, we have not had that I can remember membership on that since it was during the day. You are certainly welcome to attend. Okay. I just wonder because when I look through the uh, real estate, I'm just like, oh, I don't ever see a board member. And then, like, I don't get the invite on, like, the Google calendar. Mm -hmm. So I just didn't know. I didn't know what it was, if it was just an administration thing or a board member is I think it's assigned or goals ever. It is a subcommittee of facilities that did not have an assigned portion for the board member. recently watched a movie that is about like school safety and it was cinematic albeit but also interesting so now I'm all like hmm what's this? <laughs> Here, yeah, sure, sure. But anyway. Kevin I did a 
Go ahead, Linda. Question, I'm sorry. Um, for the unfinished business for future meetings, um, a while back, and I don't know where it fell, but I requested uh, information on virtual meetings um, for board members that are able to attend due to other reasonings, but I don't think that's ever gotten added to that list that I can see. Um, or what the outcome of that was, or if it was talked about and it wasn't at a meeting, and they got tabled or what, but um, I don't see that on the running item section or the list for that. I didn't think we had a discussion on it, but I'll ask to, my memory is not spot on either, so I'd want to get the, the minutes and review that. I, I don't recall, so I would go through that with Tammy and Shannon or Kendra. Well, I'm pretty sure we had a discussion on that a couple months ago, two months ago. No, I, I remember your discussion. I thought the board had a discussion either at the committee level the board or... The board did, but I don't know what the outcomes of that really was. We are supposed to check on pricing and things like that, I believe, right? So I remember we talked about it as a board and then I know it was discussed at PTP and I think we tabled it as you know, we weren't going to offer virtual mm -hmm. given like the time, the cost. The and what would the cost be? Because I don't know, what would the cost during COVID when we did virtual? So the cost I mean, is... We already have somebody here. Uh, somebody here is very different than making sure that everything is working on the TVs and the link. So we did share the cost. It wasn't yeah. huge. Mm -hmm. I can look up my notes. Well, that's okay. I just wanted to see it ever come back through, and I didn't see it on the writing list of my agenda. And I think there was part of it too, like from a perspective of like if you're not feeling well or you or something's going on, and we, like don't worry about this. Like take care of yourself, and this isn't like a concern. So there was kind of like a piece of like the conversation, the dialogue around it was like to just help it have us be in person, and we and then also the. Uh, the result of some of those meetings were less than productive because it was hard to get people logged in and whatnot. So it was at the end of the day, it was consensus that we just didn't test. And closed session was another conversation that was hard to just make sure that it was truly closed. So. That's all I wanted to know because I haven't heard anything about it. And I mean, if you truly can't be here, you can't be here if you're like physically. But if you got COVID or something and you have to stay home and you don't want to miss an important meeting, yeah, I'll just mention, I should have mentioned this earlier when we were doing recognitions or other things, um, that last Friday the City of Maryland conjunction, or kind of mirroring the efforts of the State of Wisconsin, declared um, Friday, October 20th as Community, Community Media Day the city of Maryland honored our ongoing partnership with Media Productions MP3. And Spitzik was there, with Meyer was there to, to receive this proclamation from the mayor uh, that day. Can we leave you with that? Thank you, Shannon. All right. That concludes our open session. So at this time, I have a contemplated motion to adjourn to executive closed session pursuant to Wisconsin statutes under section 19.85, parent 1, parent C, considering employment promotion, compensation, or performance evaluation data of a public employee over which the governmental body has jurisdiction or exercise of responsibility for any deliberating or negotiation of purchase of public properties, investing in public funds, or conducting other specified public Business, whenever competitive or bargaining reasons require a closed session, we ran out considering financial, medical, social, or personal histories or disciplinary data of specific person, preliminary considerations, specific personnel problems, or the investigation of charges against specific persons, except where Rent B applies, which if discussed in public would be likely to have a substantial adverse effect upon the reputation of any person referred to in such histories or data are involved in such problems or investigations, paren G, conferring with legal counsel for the government mental body who is offering or rendering oral or written advice concerning strategy to be adopted by the body with respect to litigation in which it is or is likely to become involved, and 118.125 for the purpose of considering student early college credit and start now applications that may involve discussions of confidential student records and to discuss other matters involving student records and personal histories that if discussed in public would likely have a substantial adverse effect on the reputations of the persons discussed. 
purpose of the closed session is for the consideration of and possible action regarding applicants for participation in the early college credit and start college now programs and to discuss the superintendent's regularly scheduled formative evaluation. Do we have that motion this evening? So moved. A motion by Linda. Do we have a second? A second. Second by Ron. Tammy, can we have a roll call on that, please? Jacqueline Gremler. Aye. Nuff Ashbeck. Aye. Brett Waller. Aye. Linda Yingling. Aye. Kendra Austin. Aye. Ron Liberty. Aye. Kevin Blake. Aye. We will 